What it do, everybody? Your boy is back on the grind one more time. And today, I actually wanted to do a different type of video. I've seen several how-to videos as far as like how to do an LS swap and such. And, uh, you know, I realized that I've never done one. And I wanted to do one because I feel like these cars are documented. Uh, these box Chevys here, they're documented. Um, but there's not a whole lot that go into grave detail. I know there was a, a few people out there that I actually follow um, who I've connected with through YouTube that have documented theirs. And for the most part, all box Chevys are the same, but all builds are different and everybody has their own way of doing their own build. So I thought that it would be kind of cool to do one on this car being that it has a different type of look. Like I don't race it or anything like that. I didn't build the car to race. I just did it for my own doing. This is what I love to do. This car has kind of taken a life of its own being that it's been known for a sleeper kind of look, you know, a sleeper look with a, a, a good powerful motor in it. And I don't go crazy with it. I don't do like crazy donuts and 360s like that. Every now and then I'll do some burnouts and whatever, but uh, you know, this car is really just made to cruise. If I want to get on the gas and get on the gas, if I want to get uh, on it, if somebody's trying to test me or trying to try me on the freeway, they gonna get a rude awakening. Um, so it's kind of more of that wow factor that like, dang, I didn't know that car had that in it. And, um, and that's all I was really going for. So anyways, I don't want to take too much of you guys' time, but I am going to go into grave detail on the car as to what I did, how I swapped different things. Uh, I know there's a lot of different ways on how you can do these swaps. I know there's a lot of different things out there that people do to these box Chevys in particular. There's some things that, you know, you have to spend a little bit of money on, but there's some things that you don't. And I know a lot of people don't like to uh, do junkyard stuff. Some people like to do junkyard stuff. There's all kinds of preferences and whatnot, but my goal with this car was to take a junkyard engine, to rebuild it myself, to use junkyard parts, but to also use new parts. And I don't feel like there is anything wrong with getting uh, parts from the junkyard, as long as you're gonna use them and they're in good condition and as long as they're safe to be used on your car and as long as you're okay with it. Uh, some people just will get a junkyard motor, throw it in, send it as what they say, and uh, kind of go from there. This build, not for that. However, I will go to the junkyard and get a junkyard part and, and, and run it, you know? So I don't technically go to the junkyard to buy a part where it's like a, a piston or something like that that's really going to be a significant piece of the motor, but I'll go to the junkyard and get a accelerator cable and use that, or if I need a certain type of bracket or something like that, nothing wrong with that. But everybody's build is different, so don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. I That's kind of one of my, I don't wanna say one of my pet peeves, but how are, how are people gonna tell you what to do and how to build your own car? You know what I'm saying? So if that's what you wanna do, then cool, do it. You live and you learn. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I would definitely say get your advice, do your research, and then just kind of go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this hood and then uh, we'll go from here. All right, you guys, so here it is right here, 1978 Caprice Classic. What you see on the outside is pretty much stock. I added some additions like the grill, headlights, halos, things like that. Uh, the bottom part of the trim was faded. Uh, it's, it has some pieces on it that are black. Over time, they fade. I think it looks tacky when they're faded like that, so I went ahead and painted them all, uh, re-blacked them out, uh, so they look really, really nice. Inside is pretty much stock. I added a console, double in iPad, things like that, but the good thing is that the console is pretty straightforward. It doesn't take away from the look of the car. Uh, I know some are like really, really nice and elegant, things like that, but for this car, uh, what I have it's just a nice straightforward console, looks good. Uh, this is what we're here to see. This is the motor that I built, Junkyard Motor, 5.3 iron block. I pretty much tore it down to the bare block and rebuilt it back up. I ball honed it out and everything, uh, cross hatches and everything looked good. Stock crank, I just had it serviced, uh, specced out fine and everything, just had it polished and all that when I uh, redid the rebuild. 
I went from dish pistons to flat top pistons because I wanted to bump up the compression from nine and a half to one to 10 and a half to one. I never intended to boost the car. So that's why I wanted to bump up the compression, but you know, it's just 10 and a half to one. That's pretty much where it's going to stay. I'm not going to do anything else with it. Stock uh, rods, just the pistons are new. New rings, cam is new. It's pretty much a sloppy stage two cam. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, Google it. Um, I mean, everything from the inside is pretty much new. The heads, I think these are 862 heads. Uh, you know, they're not, I guess, the most free-flowing heads, but I guess they're not the worst either. Uh, they do the job. I just cleaned them out and everything. Uh, they have trending upgrade, springs, uh, everything, seats, all that is new. Well, newer, at least uh, to the uh, to the engine. That's, that's really it as far as the internals. I, I kind of did like the basic things. It's not an over the top build. Uh, just added some slight upgrades just to make it run good and efficient. And uh, that's all I really wanted. Uh, with the addition of the uh, blower, as you guys have seen, uh, follow my previous uh, videos on this. This is the LSA blower that I got from Boost District, uh, boostdistrict.com. Uh, they were really good in helping me uh, figure out what I wanted to do with this engine and this particular 5.3. Now, they're 60 pound injectors, but they actually flow at about 70 pounds, so that's a plus. Um, and really, it's your pretty much your straightforward LSA blower. I mean, I still have the stock pulley on it. I didn't want to go uh, any smaller right now just because I wasn't sure how much power it was going to make. Uh, but this pulley actually allowed me and this setup here actually allowed me to run up to 13 pounds of boost and that's really good for uh, this uh, pulley on there that's pretty much known to be a uh, right around 9 or 10 maybe 11 at the most so I'm happy with that I don't need to change it at all um, this whole front accessory drive is something that I put together um, I was told that this component right here uh, would not work with any other uh, AC bracket however after doing research on my own I, I didn't see anybody doing this I just thought that it would work and by taking measurements and looking at different things and things like that um, I figured out that it would work and so I kind of took a chance on it but as you can see <laughs> it is pretty dang close but hey all you need is a little bit of clearance and you're good as long as it's not touching and hitting you're fine so this is a LSX Concepts tensioner for a LSA uh, blower. It's not their race drive. It's just their normal tensioner. So uh, they have a race drive. Uh, they have two different ones, I believe, but I got the uh, kind of the, I, I guess you could say entry level one, uh, their base level one. So um, this is the one that I got it actually works really, really well. So my challenge was to try to find a R4 uh, compressor bracket that would fit and work for that. And this one is a ICT billet brand. Uh, I don't know the part number offhand, uh, but it's not necessarily for LSA setup, but this is the one that I picked. They have a few, but this is the one that I picked that I figured that would work with this, and sure enough, it did. Uh, this is a, uh, oh, this is all Corvette spacing as well, all Corvette spacing. So that's Corvette spacing. This alternator and power steering bracket is corvette spacing uh, this is the bigger alternator there that i have there and the uh the power steering pump is back there uh, this is also uh the pulley the power steering pulley is a little bit smaller uh it, it keeps out the way of the uh, power steering gearbox down there and and plus with this bracket setup it actually raises it up a little bit so it, it stays clear of the uh, power steering gearbox I have a CTSV harmonic balancer, so that way I can run the blower on its own dedicated drive. And then the whole accessory system uh, rides on the six rib setup. So this is eight rib, six rib, and then you have the uh, four rib, I believe, right behind it, uh, part of the pulley for uh, AC if you have a low mount and you're running the, uh, the stock kind of AC setup for this particular car. But I don't, so I have this. Uh, has an oil catch can, ZL1 water pump, and then I just took measurements for the belt just to make it work. I think I kind of hit everything up here. This is a Griffin radiator. Uh, again, junkyard park. I got the fans from the junkyard. That's from a 04 or 05 Dodge Stratus. The reason I picked a Stratus slash uh, Intrepid, uh, well, they're a little bit different, but uh, the Stratus I have heard 
flowed really well. I've never, ever, ever had any problems with overheating with this. So I got that from my 04 Dodge Stratus. Uh, the only thing that I would say that I kind of dislike about it is it doesn't cover the whole part of the radiator. However, uh, in my research, as long as the fan covers about 70% of the actual core of the radiator, you're good. So, but never had any issues with that. Uh, the next set of fans that I got for my Chevelle are actually from an Intrepid. And uh, those are supposed to be monsters of a fan. And hooking them up, uh, man, they do flow really well. So uh, if you guys didn't know that, you can do that. Uh, AC, everything works. All this AC system, condenser, everything is for a 89 to 90 box Chevy. It fit in here perfect. Accumulator, all that, all these lines, uh, the condenser and everything for 89 to 90 box. On these cars, the condenser part of the, um, the uh, ports are on this side, but I wanted them over here, so that's why I changed the whole setup to an 89 to 90 box. Fit perfect, no issues. The only thing I had to do was uh, have uh, custom fittings made for uh, this line right here. I forgot where this one goes. I think it goes right to the condenser. And so they custom made that just out of hydraulic hose shot for me. I've had people... Uh, tell me before, oh, it would look so clean if you hide the wires, or you should hide the wires, whatever. My goal was to never actually hide all of these wires. I did want to hide and clean up some of the wires so it didn't look like just wires everywhere. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to run this lid too. Uh, but what my goal was, was to make it look like this engine came kind of like this from the factory. So... From the factory, especially on the box Chevy, all this stuff is supposed to show. All these wires show. That's how the wires were originally ran on the box Chevy. And so I was just trying to keep that look and kind of trying to add to it. But just to make it um, look just a lot nicer, cleaner, and whatnot. So that was my goal. I think it looks pretty clean. Uh, there's no issues that I have with it at all. I'm still not totally done with everything in here, but it's running, it's driving, it's good to go. That is actually a separate power steering reservoir that I had to remote locate over there. If I had more room over here, I probably would have put it here, but it's good uh, over there for now. This is a one lid. I have it running the water, the coolant portion running through this that I made right here out of my old washer fluid. Reservoir, I just painted it up and everything. I have this strap on it here. So, cause this isn't a screw down cap, it just snaps on. So I have this strap on it there. Uh, this is like actually a gun strap to wrap around your, your thigh and uh, it wraps around a holster or <laughs> around that. So um, the reason why I got it, cause it has like a, a sticky kind of back so it won't slide or anything. So I just have that there. I thought it would look decent and didn't look too bad. I got my heat exchanger down here. That's what helps allow the uh, lid, the brick, to stay cool. Now, how I have this engine set in here is just with my stock engine mounts. That's it. All I did was use the ICT billet adapter plates. I don't even know if you guys can see them. Uh, you won't be able to see them down there. So just, they're just a regular $30 adapter plates. The only thing that you have to do is you can use your stock clamshells and to mount to the uh, motor mounts. Uh, the clamshells have like a U on the back and all you have to do is just ground that U down, just shave it down, make it flat, and then uh, you'll be good to go. Now, some of the adapter plates are supposed to have provisions for those uh, U pieces or that U piece that is on the clamshells, uh, but I have yet to see one work. Uh, so I just went ahead and shaved it off and it was totally, totally fine from there. Uh, I went with all polyurethane, like energy suspension, uh, motor mounts down there. So I went ahead and changed those out while I was down there. I think I have the engine back further a little bit. And that was the only way that I could get this to fit with my oil pan. Uh, my oil pan is a GM performance oil pan and had to push it back far in order for the sump portion of the oil pan to fit and clear my cross member. And so um, I have room there. Now, by doing that, it pushed everything back and I had to actually get my rear end shortened, I think about 
two and a half, maybe, maybe three inches. I'm not sure exactly, but I did have to get it shortened. But I actually wanted it to get serviced anyway, so we got it balanced and all that stuff, new U-joints and everything on the stock, stock drive shaft. That is a stock drive shaft that I just had reworked, balanced and everything, good to go. This engine is putting over 600 horsepower. It's probably a little bit less than that to the wheels. Man, this engine is running really, 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 really good right now, and I'm completely, completely happy with it. Uh, I still have the stock gearbox. Uh, I don't need to really upgrade it at the sound like that. It's just a cruiser. I don't autocross or anything like that. So front discs, rear drum, they came stock that way. So that's just how I left it. Uh, I think eventually at some point I do want to upgrade the suspension, but another video, another day. Uh, the suspension in the back is all upgraded. It's just the front is still stock. Uh, as far as the transmission goes, for all 60E, it's just been rebuilt. Uh, to handle this much power. Not a crazy rebuild, uh, but just enough to handle this. I actually have a torque converter that's from a, maybe like a mid 2000s Camaro. It's probably somewhere floating around 2200 to 2400 stall. I had a little bit higher stall on it before, but with my particular setup and power, a lower stall ended up being a lot better and working a lot better. So it's performing actually a lot better. Uh, transmission is good. Handles this power, no issues. The only problem with it is, is it has its one, two shift is really aggressive. Uh, I had it serviced and had a spring changed out to try to lower the aggressive shift. It really didn't work that much. So what I did, and this will be in another video, is I ordered um, this company called Sonics. And it makes a, uh, it's, it's some type of, uh, part that goes in in with the accumulator and you like, change some stuff around basically and it's supposed to help lighten that shift up and again that'll be in just another video it was some research that i found out that uh people were having success with kind of softening up that one two shift well like i said that'll be in another video uh but that's the only gripe that i have about this transmission is that one two shift is really really aggressive uh everything else is 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 perfectly fine as we're going back to the rear, uh, the rear end is from a 94 to 96 uh, Caprice Impala SS. Uh, same rear end. It's a direct bolt-on to this engine. Direct bolt-on. You can bolt it right up. No issues at all. Uh, I have hot chisk upper and lower control arms. And uh, I still got to order a sway bar, so I'm going to add that in. And I have mood coils, Bilstein shocks. Uh, it's riding really nice back there, stock height. This rear end has been built to handle the power, 373 gears, Yukon axles, posi, all that, the works, you guys. This rear end is great, no issues at all. Money side of it, I don't wanna get too much into that, guys, because you can spend as much as you want on this engine. You could go totally budget and just run, you know, a uh, engine that you get from the junkyard, 1500 bucks, put a little bit of money in it, maybe be out, you know, 2000, 2500 bucks, whatever, throw it in, send it. Or you could go as high as you want to go. I decided to put a little bit of money into mine just because I wanted a certain look. I wanted this blower set up. I wanted to do certain particular things on it uh, to make it look and perform the way that I wanted to. And there's also some things that I wouldn't necessarily say I cheaped out on, but I just did kind of a little bit more budget. Guys, build your engine how you want. Again, don't let anybody discourage you or tell you to not do certain things. Just because this engine looks like I spent a crazy amount of money on it, you know, which I spent a fair amount of money on it, but at the same time, I saved in a lot of places. Like for example, that Pro Charger that I had on it before. I brought that blower for 1600 bucks. Those blowers brand new are like 3000 to $3,500 or whatever, just depending on what, which one you get. I got a really good deal on it. I literally pieced that whole Pro Charger set up together by going as budget as I could. I got eBay pipes, I got a uh, CX Racing, uh, intercooler. You know, I could have went a lot, lot more expensive if I wanted to, uh, but they were all basically eBay parts. And luckily I got the bracket uh, off uh, Facebook Marketplace uh, that held the Pro Charger head unit up, but it was pretty much budget. It was all 
eBay parts with the exception of the blower and it still put out well over 550 horsepower and uh, on a conservative you guys a conservative tune we actually tuned it down a lot because my fuel system i was running like decapped injectors and that's another thing i was doing i had a uh, decapped truck injectors just because i was spending a lot of money a lot more money than i anticipated and i couldn't really afford 300 400 injectors uh, at the time because i wanted to run 80 so uh, i saw that you can actually decap uh, truck injectors and have them flow from like 35 pounds to up to uh, 70 plus pounds so that's what i did so i noticed night and day difference from my fuel system now to what i had back then because this is actually performing a lot better it starts better it runs better better gas mileage and everything versus uh my decapped injectors but i ran that those decapped injectors for three years you guys and it ran pretty dang good the only thing i had issues with is just gas mileage and we couldn't get it really tuned perfect but it ran pretty good it had some not really starting issues but it it would even when it was warm uh it would it wouldn't start right up it would take like several cranks and then it would start up so i always kind of knew there was something with the fueling there but all in all i never had any issues uh getting uh, enough fuel to the engine uh, like i said if i stepped on the gas it would respond great uh, so like i said you guys i ran decapped injectors for the longest and it performed just fine again don't let anybody discourage you on to build your engine uh build it how you want it now would i recommend decapping injectors uh possibly if, if if that's if that's what you need to do in order to make your build how you want it and perform how you want and you just don't have the means to do it sure why not mine was successful for three plus years uh why not now if you have the means to buy a better fuel system injectors things like that well then i would suggest that as well so you do you you guys you do you oh the transmission the transmission actually mounts into the stock location you do not and i always see people talking about oh the stock cross member won't work and whatever on a box chevy guys the stock one works i've been running this one for almost five years now no issues at all 600 plus horsepower and stock cross member works just fine all we did was modify the driver's side because this cross member didn't have provisions for dual exhaust so it has a hump on this side for the exhaust but it doesn't have one on that side so what my boy did is just cut a notch on the driver's side he actually had a, a big piece of pipe and he um he used that piece of pipe to fill in the gap and then just cut the pipe out notched it out to fit and then uh, i was able to run my exhaust right along under the uh, cross member fits just fine actually i'll probably try to put a picture right here so you can see it oh fueling yeah let's talk about fueling so i have uh well right now i have an aeromotive fuel pressure regulator now i added that in because before i was using this tbss intake and it has the regulator on the rail there if you guys can kind of see that right there so those regulators and those have been tested those have been tested if you go to uh sloppy mechanics he actually tested that stock regulator, I believe, in upwards to uh, 600 or 700 horsepower, something like that. So you can get by with the stock truck regulator. However, uh, with this one and with the particular rail, the LSA rail that I'm using, it's a returnless kind of style setup. So I had to use a regulator and uh, make it work that way. So we have that aeromotive regulator going down it's all dash six line i believe dash six and it feeds this engine well uh my tuner said i had no issues with fueling at all uh even the voltage and everything my wires were all running good it was receiving good good voltage back there uh to the pump i have a walbro 400 pump i believe in tank pump intake pump oh also I am running my stock tank. This is the 
the stock tank that came in this car. All I'm doing is running a Grand National sending unit and if it's just fine. The only issues that I have every now and then is if I run the gas too low, then I can have issues with fuel starvation. Uh, that's because these uh, tanks don't have a sump. So what I do is I just keep the gas at a quarter or above the whole time and I never have an issue. If you're going budget or you don't wanna spend the money in the tank, guys, I've been running that tank ever since I had the car. And I just keep the gas full or somewhat full and I'm good. So you don't have to get a new tank. I'm just letting you know right now, Grand National sending unit, you can run your stock tank. Trust me, these cars have the bigger hat on the tank and so do the Grand National. Guys, I've had three Grand Nationals, three. So I know what I'm talking about here, all right? And then you just put your own uh, end tank pump in there. It supplies enough uh, fuel uh, to this build and it runs just fine. These engines will sit right in. You can use your stock motor mounts, stock clamshells, stock position and everything. You do have to run the GM Performance or Holly uh, oil pans. You can't use the truck oil pans at all. So uh, you do have to use those. Other than that, they'll sit right in. No modifications needed to the cross member at all. Uh, I know there's videos out there too where there's no modifications needed to run the lower the lower AC compressor down there. I think Steve Davis uh, might have a video on that. Um, but I think you can do that. Again, transmission. I'm just trying to revisit everything. Uh, yeah, just mounts in the stock location. Even, even when I pushed the engine back, I was still able to use the, the transmission um, cross member in the stock location. All I had to do uh, was just move the, the cross member back a hole and it fits still just fine. So there's, there's two mounting points on each side uh, for the cross member. They're held, be, held in by two bolts on both sides. I just pushed it back a bolt and um, and then I was good to go. I think that is really it, y'all. I don't wanna make this video too, too drawn out. Oh, I guess I missed the header. So the headers are just speed engineering shorty headers that I had. Uh, they actually dropped right in, no issues at all. Um, I did have to kind of notch out a, a piece of um, the sheet metal uh, where the two sheet metals meet. There's kind of like a little flange there. I did have to grind it down because it was hitting a portion of uh, the collector. So I had to ground that down. That's the only thing that I had to do. And I did have to grind down a part of the boss uh, on the side of the engine. There's a boss that sticks out about that much in order for the uh, headers to sit flush against the flanges along the along the side of the block, I did have to uh, ground that down and cut that off on the, uh, the side of the block. But other than that, you guys, that is really pretty much it. There is not a whole lot needed in order to do these swaps. And trust me, I'm just a guy who just does this as a hobby. My profession is fitness, but I love cars. And if I can do it, you guys, you guys can too. I, I paid for everything in regards to all my cars out of my own pocket. Nobody's helping me. I've talked to nobody. Nobody has ever reached out to me as far as sponsorship or anything like that. I don't make a whole lot of money off this YouTube thing. I do it because I love it. And if the channel grows to a point where, you know, I do get some sponsors and I do get paid a lot more from it, great. But that is not my goal with the channel. I just wanted to document things. And since I was doing the work anyway, I thought, hey, why not just document it and, and I help somebody else? And that's with in my profession, that's what I do, y'all. I help others. And that transitions over to this. If I'm gonna be doing the work anyway, why not just film it? Yeah, it takes a little bit longer and to do the editing and things like that. But I mean, when I'm inside in the house and I'm not training somebody, I'm usually just sitting on the couch anyway, just watching TV. And so, and I'm probably more than likely on my phone. So why not just document it, take a little bit of time, edit it, and put it out there for you guys. Again, these swaps are not hard, you guys. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, another LS swap in an old school, whatever. Like, uh, I'm never gonna LS swap my car or whatever. Guys, these, the way I look at these, these are like the modern day 350s. Back in the day, 
every car had a 350. Every car had a 350, 327, 383, like whatever. They were in every single thing there was back then. And when the 350 came out, I'm pretty sure everybody was like, oh man, that's the engine and this and that, whatever. Because they evolved, all engines evolved, right? And then when the 350 came out, that was probably the predecessor of a different style engine, a straight six or something like that, right? So now you got the LS swaps. They're the modern day 350. So I don't know what the big deal is about it. Um, I had a 305 in this thing before and I wasn't about to mess with that. And I dabbled. I thought about putting a 350 in it or something a little bit bigger, but I was like, nah, I, I'm kind of interested in this LS swap thing. And then I needed a project and then it, <laughs> it turned into this. So even with my Chevelle, you guys, I actually thought about putting a 454 in that. And when I started looking at prices and comparisons to a 454 versus a LS swap, Man, big block parts, you guys, are not cheap. And uh, people say, oh, yeah, it's cheaper to do this, you know, on a 350 or 454 or whatever. Yeah, man, they ain't cheap. And being that I have never built a 454, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities to a 350. I built a 327 before that I had in my Chevy Nova. Uh, that's why sometimes you see my Chevy Nova sign over here. Uh, I had that when I owned my Chevy Nova, but... Um, I was just familiar and fresh with the LS in regards to this particular build. And so I was like, well, you know, let me just get a, a bigger motor. I got a 6.0. I'll build that up and I'll build it better. I have better parts in that in that motor and I'll supercharge it and I'll put my pro charger on it. And then uh, and then we'll just kind of go from there. So uh, that build is going to be nice, you guys. I, that, that thing, I think, is going to put out some, some, some good power on that one, too. But, I mean, I don't know what the whole big deal about it is. You know, I know I, I kind of feel like it's a lot of, like, the, uh, the more traditional uh, style kind of um, muscle heads or old school um, guys or girls who have these cars. They just kind of just like their, their own, uh, their old 350s. 400s 454s in them or whatever but i don't really care either way i just had this conversation with my friend last night we went out um to dinner as couples and uh me and my girl and him and his girl and we were talking about like numbers matchings and things like that now i'm not too big into the numbers matching stuff um you know if i get a let's say if i got an ss uh chevelle or something like that and um I probably maybe would want a numbers matching car, but if I really liked the car and it wasn't numbers matching, I'll still buy it, like whatever. And I know possibly that it it would help me as far as resale value or, or reselling or things like that, but I'm not hooked on all that stuff. And that's why with this particular, particular car, I didn't care about having the original engine in it. Even with my Chevelle, like I probably could have, you know, went out and tried to seek uh, the motor that was supposed to go in that car and things like that. But the car was a roller and I got nothing with the car except for the body and the frame, some wheels and a few extra parts. That's it. And so I thought about a 454 and I was like, no, let me put an LS in it. I'm already familiar with it. I already know kind of how much parts cost. I know how far I can go with it or not, depending on how much money I wanted to do. So, or how much money I wanted to spend on it. So I know it's not going to be a numbers matching car. I know that maybe to your more traditional list, uh, old school, you know, uh, muscle car guy or, or gal, uh, you know, it might not be to their liking. But at the same time, my car, my liking is what I want to do. And you guys should do that too. build your car how you want it. Don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't be putting these type of parts on there. This, this and that. Do what you want to do. Do what's within your budget. Stand in your lane and do what you need to do. I am not rich by any means. Yeah, it might seem like it because I got three cars. Actually, four cars if you count my Escalade. But, guys, these cars are all paid for. I didn't buy these cars overnight. Uh, I sold one car, my Regal, to get the Skylark. And that the reason why I did that is because that Skylark was in our family for many, 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 many years. And I had to sell that car 
in order to get out of some debt that I had built up. We all go through things in life where, you know, we have struggles and things like that. So I actually had to sell that car and I didn't want to sell it. I didn't think that I would ever see it again. I really never looked for it. You know, kind of here and there, I might have, you know, typed in Skylark to see if what was out there. But that particular car, I never looked for it again. And then it popped up a couple times on my feed. And I was like, wow, it's still around here. So that was the perfect opportunity for me to get it. I was already kind of thinking about selling the Regal. And the Regal, I loved that car. I loved, loved, loved that car. I've had three of them. And I know if I ever want another one, I could get one. Now, being that they're rising in prices, I probably would be paying more for it. But I know that I could get one. The car that I used to own, the Skylark, the car coming back up, I can't get that car again. So I didn't want to miss out on it. It was one thing that I always wished. The knowledge that I know now, what would that Skylark have been like? So I am so happy that I got it back. And man, that Skylark is going to be one nice ride. Uh, the Chevelle. That car I bought as a roller. I never, I would never, ever, ever be able to afford a done Chevelle. Uh, I don't want to say never, ever, ever, but you know, if I save my money, whatever, and I could probably buy one, but I don't want to spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars on a complete Chevelle. In order to get one running that's in good condition, that's like a good solid car to start with, you are still paying ten, fifteen, maybe even upward to twenty thousand. However, once you get in that range, then you're getting into uh, other people's problems, other people's cover ups, things like that. So I thought, well, maybe I could buy a roller something that I know that's bare bones, something that I could see all the imperfections with, start fresh, and then uh, go from there and build it to be my own. Take my time doing it and putting the money where I need to in it and then just go from there and then I know the whole ins and outs of the car. That way, when I'm done with that car, that car will probably be double, worth double what I put into it. And I knew that being a, Ch a Chevelle, I knew that, uh, that car is probably going to be worth some money. The value on Chevelle just keep rising and rising and rising. So I know that it's probably going to be not only um, a great car to have, but it's almost kind of like an investment. And even though I'm putting money into it and I'm not getting it back, I know later on down the road, if I ever were to sell it, I can get some really, really, really good money out of it. And the cool thing is, is I'm not doing the car um, just totally like, like, off grid you know what i'm saying like i could literally probably take the wheels off and i can make it look more traditional if i want or the wheels that i have for it it'll make it look how i want it how i want it so i think it can go both ways it won't be too over the top uh but it'll be a nice clean ride and i know that if i were to ever sell it i could get probably way more money than i put into it and then the caprice this caprice i bought I'll tell you guys how much I bought it for. I bought it for 5,500 bucks. Totally stock, low miles, well-documented. Lady had every single record on the car. Took well, well care of this car. I knew where it came from. One owner here in Washington State. It's a Washington State car. She added some things on it that she wanted. Cruise control, things like that. She drove this car to Palm Springs and back. Montana and back. Wherever. She drove it everywhere. Just put cruise control on it. And then that's it. Just kept up with the maintenance and good. I spent 5500 bucks on this car. Crazy. Crazy how much these cars have risen in price. I never would have expected it. So just the other day, I had somebody off me 20 racks. 20 Gs for this car. Literally, somebody offered me 20 Gs for this car. I get people that inbox me all the time for this car. So I could probably get my money back from this car too if I wanted to. But out of all the cars that I have probably, this car means maybe the most to me just because, I don't know, man. When I got this car, I've told the story before, but it got me out of a rough patch, a rough place mentally, emotionally um, with this car and it'll be hard to part with. So I'm not going to get into that. But man, I love this car. I love driving this car. I love everything about this car. And this car is going to be sticking around for a while. So anyways, you guys, I don't want to go on and ramble on too much. Uh, but with all that being said, you guys, 
build your car how you want the car, build it to your liking, do what you want to do with it, don't worry about nobody else, just get in the garage, get it done, make it happen, don't matter how long it takes, do you, and that's it. So hopefully I gave you guys some good information on how to swap on these box Chevys. This can actually transition into other cars as well. You know, just take bits and pieces of information and then uh, just go with it how you want. All right. So that's it, y'all. I'm out of here. Deuces. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Y'all stick with me. We got this. I'm out.